Friday, November 2nd. It was my best friend's 21st birthday. He's named Alonzo, but we call him Al. There is a group of five of us that have hung together since we were juniors in high school, and Al is the youngest. Al wanted a night at the fancy bars inside the casinos, getting drunk, playing poker, and maybe hooking up with somebody. I'm the only one of us five who is gay. If they find some action, I'm on my own. All five of us live down in Henderson. Technically, it's a suburb on the southern part of Las Vegas, miles and miles from the Strip. I commute most days to college. My major is chemistry, and eventually I want to work with forensics. Since I was a kid, I've watched all the old forensic TV crime shows. It fascinates me, and I want to explore crime scenes and analyze evidence and work with some of the most up-to-date equipment developed. And solve mysteries. That's enough information about me, because tonight is all about Al. Or so I thought. We'd Ubered over to the Bernini Casino and Hotel, rented a couple of rooms, and planned a night of it. I was dressed to impress because my brand new, button-down, imported from Egypt linen shirt with very subtle vertical stripes had arrived this afternoon. It was an off-white, thin, almost see-through fabric, and, modest person that I was, I wore an Under Armour gray, form-fitting tank underneath. To complement it, I wore a thin silver chain necklace and a sterling silver bracelet. There was a small problem. I'm terrible at poker. I allowed myself one hundred dollars to gamble with, and within ten minutes I'd lost half of that. My friends kept on playing. What's the phrase? Unlucky at cards, lucky at love. Well, I'm not so hot at that either. I sat at the bar, nursing my favorite cocktail. It's called Purple Rain, and it's a combination of vodka, lemonade, grenadine, and a few other things. It's good. They make it here heavy on the lemonade but I don't mind. A handsome man sat down at the bar and ordered a miller. The bartender filled a mug from the tap. I guess the man was five years older than me, dusky hair, and wearing a nice jacket. He gave off lawyer vibes, and his brow furrowed, and his mouth had hardened. Somebody was upset. I didn't know it then, but that guy was about to accidentally change my life, and he'd never know it. Alcohol makes me a little more outgoing. I walked over to him, carrying my purple rain, and sat on the bar stool one away from him. Hey, I said. Hey yourself, he said. You look upset, I said. I'm Kevin, and I've got time to listen. His lips quirked into a small, knowing smile, and he said, Nice to meet you, Kevin. What are you doing around these parts? Mostly losing money, I said. I'm really bad at poker, but my friends are making a night of it. You? I'm Nathan, he said. And what's bothering me? I'm trying to keep my brother from making a big mistake. What kind of a mistake, I asked, sipping my purple rain. He wants to drop out of college and tour Europe with some friends, and he expects me to foot the bill, Nathan said. He sipped his beer, drummed his fingers against the counter, and looked at me. You seem like a nice guy, so let me be up front. I have many friends who are gay, but I'm not gay. I'm waiting for my wife and we're going out to dinner while we figure out what to do. So if you're hoping to hit on me, not going to happen. Shot down again. Unlucky at love and unlucky at cards. I figured you were straight, I said, but you look like you needed a friend. He returned my smile and said, I give advice for a living, but I'm completely out right now. It's just me and my brother. And I guess I'm the classic overprotective idiot, but I want him to be independent. Honey, a woman said behind me. She sidled up to Nathan, gripping his hand before saying, They're booked, some kind of religious conference or something. Who's your friend? I'm Kevin, I said. 
Looking for love? My man's taken, she quipped, and lightly kissed him on the cheek. Just like that old Johnny Lee song, I'm looking in all the wrong places, I said, and sipped my drink. Give it time, Nathan said. All it takes is a kiss with the right someone special. Things will work out. Same advice right back at you, I said. Things will work out. He and his wife lightly kissed. Don't you worry, Kevin, his wife said. If a shy girl like me can find a hunk like my husband, I bet a handsome guy like you will find your man. If we ever meet again, you'll have to tell us about him. Somebody's gaydar was on point tonight. Nice meeting you, they said, and I saluted with the purple rain cocktail. Nathan put some money down and said, Bartender, my friend's next drink is on me. Nice people. I watched them walk away with their arms about each other's waists, suddenly curious about the full story about their brother. I'd never learn it. Do you want a second purple rain or something different? The bartender asked me. Second one, I said. The bartender had just delivered it when a gentleman about my age sat next to me. He tapped his fingers on the counter a couple of times and read something on his phone. The bartender looked at the man and asked, Can I help you? He shook his head and then looked at me. Your name is Kevin, right? Did I hear you tell those people you were gay? I nodded, slightly alarmed. That's correct. What of it? I need your help, he said. All you have to do is kiss a straight man for thirty seconds, maybe less, and I'll give you one hundred dollars. That's it? I asked. One kiss? What's the catch? No catch, he said. We're holding a party right now, and we need you for a little game called Kiss and Tell. It will only take ten minutes, probably less. The thing is, it's happening in five minutes. Are you in? I'm not familiar with that game, I said. It's a kissing game, and we need one more person. You'd be perfect, he said, and pulled a hundred dollar bill from his pocket. But he didn't give it to me. Proof that I'm serious. It's yours when the game is done. I looked at the money. After losing half my money at poker, this could help my finances and give me something to do while my friends played cards. So I agreed. After quickly downing the purple rain, I followed the man. He led the way to the nearest elevator, and we went to the seventh floor. It would be stupid to go with a complete, total stranger. So why did I? Maybe I was bored. At least I texted my friends what was happening. The man sent a text, I guess telling his friends we were on our way. Whatever doubts I might have, the man was legit. The door led into a suite. Big room, bathroom, kitchenette, seating area, two bedrooms. These guys had been drinking for a while. Beer must have been the drink of choice because beer cans and beer bottles were everywhere. The room stank of pizza and buffalo wings and beer and wine coolers and aftershave and somebody had lit a decorative candle with a fresh linen scent to mask the smell. But it didn't mask the smell. The table held a bouquet of two dozen condoms displayed like roses in a cheap vase. All colors, all types. Several were scattered about the table. The wall had multiple pictures of a guy and girl that looked like wedding invite pictures. Near that was a tacky sign that said, Surprise! with each letter in a random color. And another sign said, Enjoy your freedom before it's gone. Fifteen guys stood around the room, while one guy sat in a chair, a girl loosely tying his hands behind his back with a red scarf, and a similar scarf was already tied about his eyes. When she finished tying the scarf, she stood first in line. Including the girl that had tied the scarves, Five girls stood in a line near him. The second girl in line held a hand to her nose. I guess she didn't like the bachelor smell. Gator alert. Was I the only gay guy here? The blindfolded guy had professionally styled auburn hair and wore new clothes, a light blue, loose-fitting, button-down shirt that shimmered like silk, light beige Bermuda shorts, light brown casual loafers, and a nervous, twitchy smile. His only piece of jewelry was the sterling silver double-chain necklace. Somebody had wanted to look nice tonight, 
but based on the signs, I think his friends had surprised him. The guy I entered with gestured for me to stand by the girls at the end of the informal line. We all nodded to each other, but one of them placed a finger on her lips, gesturing for me to keep quiet. Was this a frat initiation party? Can't be. Rush week was two months ago, and those parties happen in the frat house, and those aren't surprise parties. Was this a frat president initiation party? No, those happen in the spring, and those aren't surprise parties either. A surprise birthday party? Nobody looked like parents or grandparents, and no birthday cake, so that can't be it. I looked closer at the people, at the girls, at the man in the chair. The third girl in line twisted an engagement ring around a ring finger. Was she the fiancé, secretly pretending to be a stranger? They were playing some weird kissing game, so that kind of makes sense. I should have guessed. A surprise bachelor party. So then some of these guys are the best man and groomsmen. From the bedroom, a couple guys rolled out a cart with odd things on it and placed it close to me and the girls. It held a can of spray, whipped cream, a feather boa, a woman's long black velvet glove, chocolate syrup, a cat toy with a feather on the end, and scissors? Along those were a half dozen white hand towels and a large bowl of water. They were expecting tonight to get weird. Good thing the blindfolded man and his chair rested on a large plastic tarp, or the hotel would charge them a fortune in cleaning. Suddenly, I felt sorry for the guy. I'd lay odds he didn't know what was about to happen. I hope I'm wrong. But the alleged fiancé, the best man, and the groomsmen were setting this poor guy up for embarrassing blackmail pictures. I bet they'd show at the wedding reception and every anniversary for the next ten years. I should have said no, but it was too late now. Some guy, best man I bet, raised his hands for silence. I'd like to thank everyone here for playing the game. For those of you who don't know, this is Tony, the groom. It's all about him tonight. Rules for the game? We have six contestants, and we will go in order of their arrival. Each contestant gets 30 seconds. When the timer goes off, the kiss begins. The groomsman will rate the kiss up to five eggplants. One is the worst, five is the best. To make it a little more interesting, contestants may choose a toy to enhance their kiss. However, once a contestant chooses a toy, no other contestant can use it. One last rule. Contestants can only use their mouth to interact with Tony, or they can use the toy. No other physical contact is allowed. Any contact below the belt means they are instantly disqualified and get the walk of shame out the door. Remember, Tony is getting married on Sunday, so let's keep this relatively PG-13. Contestants, there will be no talking until after the game, or you will be disqualified. For all as voyeurs, no talking until after the game as well but cheering and clapping are allowed. Contestants will now choose their weapon in the order of their arrival. Girl number one chose the feather boa. Girl number two chose the chocolate syrup. Girl number three, the suspected fiancé, chose the spray whipped cream. Girl number four chose the scissors. Girl number five chose the bowl of water? I'm not choosing the cat toy, so the velvet glove is mine. They wheeled the cart away, leaving it close in case we needed a towel. The fifteen guys watching, Cat called, and cheered like they were at a football game. Contestant number one, get ready, the best man said. All the girls put on a lot of lipstick. A guy, one of the groomsmen I think, spritzed perfume on me and the girls, I guess to make us smell similar or something stupid. The best man made an elaborate show of setting a large timer for 30 seconds. Starting the timer, he yelled, Contestant number one, go. The first girl ran to Tony, wrapping him in the boa and giggling. Her kiss was appropriate for a groom-to-be.
No tongue, an almost chaste kiss. She was cute and harmless in a flirty, bubbly kind of way. Her boyfriend must be in the crowd, and she didn't want to make him jealous. The timer went off. The groomsmen conferred, and one of them held up two fingers. Boring. Two eggplants. She took a wine cooler and stood next to a guy in the back. I'd lay odds that's her boyfriend, and their quick kiss confirmed it. She never let go of the boa. I bet she's using that tonight with her boyfriend. A small question wickled itself through my mind. Why would she make out with the groom with her boyfriend watching? Once the timer was reset, contestant number two ran to Tony and ripped his brand new light blue shirt open. Buttons flew in all direction and the fabric ripped at the shoulder. What the? Tony said, and before he could say anything else, she planted her mouth on his. Technically, ripping the shirt was legal because she didn't touch Tony. She spread the shirt wide, revealing Tony's naked chest. She squirted chocolate syrup all over his face, his chest, his shoulders, and instead of kissing him, she licked it off. What a mess. Some of it had even dribbled on his shoes. The guys howled like a drunk frat house. In the last five seconds, she smeared her chocolate-covered mouth on his. The groomsmen loved her. She got four eggplants. Tony's face had a weird smile, like he was trying to be a good sport or something. The alleged fiancé went next. She filled her mouth with the spray whipped cream and dove for the kill. Her tongue lashed inside his mouth and whipped cream dribbled everywhere, down his chin, down his chest, down his Bermuda shorts. I cringed. Why did I find this disgusting? Why did all the other people in the room get turned on by it? The groomsmen really loved it. The alleged fiancé received five eggplants. Contestant number four took her scissors and cut off the rest of the shirt, leaving Tony topless. Side note, Tony had nice pecs and kissable abs, and the only thought that came into my head was, can I take him home? Contestant number four quickly kissed the middle of Tony's chest, then spent the last few seconds French kissing Tony through the mess of whipped cream and chocolate. Deeply, deeply French kissing. You know those face-hugger aliens from the movie? And the thing they stuck down their victims' throats? That's how deeply her kiss was. And disgusting, because the whipped cream and chocolate syrup made squelchy, weird, embarrassing noises. Tony was hot. And sexy. And I wish it was me covering him in chocolate and whipped cream. But the kiss left me cold. The timer hadn't run out, so she took a breath and once again pressed her lips to his and savagely kissed him. Ew! I cringed and shuddered and looked away. Poor guy, did he even know her? The timer beeped. The best man yelled, time's up. The girl kept kissing Tony. Two groomsmen took her arms and pulled her off the guy. I expected to smile from him. After all, isn't this every straight guy's fantasy? Tony wasn't smiling. How many eggplants? Somebody yelled. The girl I assumed to be the fiancé yelled, Zero. But the groomsmen gave her four eggplants. The final girl got ready. The best man set the timer and said, Dive in. Contestant number five broke the no-contact rule immediately and sat on Tony's lap. She dumped the bowl of water on both of them, and then she tongue-wrestled while lap-dancing. She got zero eggplants, but she smiled and said it was worth it. Then two of the groomsmen marched her into the hall, loudly saying, Disqualified. I don't think Tony was enjoying himself, but I couldn't be sure because the red bandana hid his eyes. He seemed stiff and uncomfortable. My turn. Tony was half-naked, blindfolded, had chocolate stains and whipped cream everywhere, and pieces of the boa were stuck in his hair. The guys and girls all screamed as if we were at the circus, and half of them had their phones out, recording. Once again, Tony's smile seemed brave and forced. I bet this surprise party hadn't gone at all like he expected. His clothes were ruined, and look at all the chocolate in his hair. 
maybe being gay and getting picked on back in high school, I had developed a little bit of empathy. I recognized the signs of someone pretending to have a good time when the reality was that only the people around him, including his fiance, were having fun. I took a towel from the cart, wet it at the kitchenette, and walked over to him. With my back to the crowd, I whispered, Let me clean you up first. You don't know me, and I don't know you. They promised me a hundred dollars to kiss you, and a hundred dollars more to the winner. But if you've had enough, I don't have to do anything. Taking the towel, I cleaned most of the chocolate and whipped cream off Tony's face. Oh, God, now this towel was ruined. One hundred dollars? That explains things, he whispered. I'm sorry things turned out like this, I whispered. You seem like a nice guy. Maybe I can buy you a drink later. His mouth hinted of a slight smirk, and he whispered, It's a date. Now give me a one hundred dollar kiss because the other ones were terrible. Go ahead, impress me. The girls had all used vulgar tactics, treating Tony more like a blow-up doll than a human being. Even the fiancé. Every kiss had been sloppy and disgustingly wet and French and smeared with lipstick and chocolate and whipped cream. Almost barbaric. Almost violent. No subtlety, no respect, as gratuitous as they could make it. Their kisses reminded me of girls trying to impress a frat. I was disgusted. Did it require a gay man to teach these ladies how to kiss? I'd lose, but it was time to try a different tactic. Time to seduce a straight guy. Or as much as I could following the rules. What nobody realized, a velvet glove was a better toy than all of the others, when used right. I held up my finger, indicating I needed a minute. I wet a second towel with warm water and gently cleaned the chocolate stains and whipped cream and obnoxious lipstick stains off the poor guy's chest and shoulders, then grabbed a dry towel as an excuse to rub his skin dry. It was cheating, because I gave him a body massage at the same time as I cleaned him up. But the towel prevented my hands from making contact. You'll need a shower to get the chocolate out of your hair, I whispered. Are you ready? The best man yelled. I took a paper towel, folded it in half, and pressed my lips into it. For this tease to really work, I needed my lips as dry as possible. Ready, I said, and the best man started the timer. I wanted the effect to be dry and sensual, like being kissed by crushed velvet. As I dried Tony's shoulder, I gently ran my lips along the top of his shoulder, teasing with the soft, tender, barely felt set of small kisses. No tongue, no moisture, not sloppy, only the mouth, completely legal and completely opposite of what the girls had done. A part of me noticed that the best man never actually started the timer. Was that on purpose, or had he assumed it had started when it hadn't? I took advantage of the extra time, and gingerly, like a shy lover, kissed his chest, his collarbones. I kissed my way down an arm and back up again. I kept my kiss as barely a tickle, definitely a tease. I worked my way to his face, softly kissing his nose, with no more than the pressure of a butterfly landing on a flower petal, then his lips, his ears. Every kiss was as much like the kiss of velvet on his skin as I could make it. Dry, sensual, intimate, erotic, a little bit of ecstasy, but only above the belt. I accidentally broke the rules, again, when I whispered, Too bad a handsome guy like you is getting married. The subtle way he smiled, the relaxing way he breathed, Tony was finally enjoying himself as I lightly, delicately, tenderly kissed his lips. Our tongues accidentally met. He stiffened, his back arched, a slight gasp escaped his lips. Something electric passed between us. He moved his head slightly, rubbing his cheek on mine. Our lips met again, tender and beautiful, 
His lips were warm and sensitive and responded to every caress. I wanted to hold him, protect him, shower him with my love. His breath was moist and smelled faintly of chocolate. I had breath mints in my pocket. I placed one between my teeth and passed it to him with our next kiss. With the lightness of a feather, I ran the velvet glove over his abs, his chest, his shoulders, my touch heavier than a tickle, but lighter than a massage. Tony gasped again. He shivered. He leaned back and smiled. He took a deep breath, his head tilting up, and my kiss tickled his Adam's apple, and with infinite slowness I traced my tongue down the center of his chest, seducing him with only my mouth, bringing him to the edge with only a kiss. All fifteen guys were watching us, hungrily, silently. Four of the five girls were watching us, a look of something intense on their face. Desire, maybe? The fiancé looked impatient. Was the whole room taking lessons on how to seduce someone? It isn't how fast you go, but how slow. Every movement was deliberate and designed to give my man as much pleasure as he could handle. That's... Did Tony just whisper? He held his breath a second. Did he shiver again? And then he whispered again. Nice. Nice. If we had enough time, how far would he let me go? Unfortunately, time ended. Suddenly, the fiancé screamed, Look at the damn time, you useless man. You are stupid. You forgot to set the timer. It's been ten minutes. She's right, the best man said, but the way he chuckled told me it wasn't an accident. Had the best man deliberately given me more time? I backed away from Tony, trying to figure out what I was going to do. Contestant number six, the best man said. It's not your fault. But you had extra time, so I'm deducting an eggplant from what the groomsmen give you. I suspected this game was rigged for the fiancé to win. It probably was a good thing, because that meant these guys were looking out for Tony. Still, I'd had some fun almost seducing a straight guy. I can't complain. Well, the groomsmen conferred, contestant number one's boyfriend asked me, Want something to drink? Hard lemonade, I said, and he handed me an ice-cold one. Then he asked me, Do you think you could give me some pointers when this is done? Before I could answer, one of the groomsmen stepped forward and said, Due to overwhelming agreement, contestant number six receives ten eggplants. We declare him the winner of the kissing round. The fiancé sneered, Men are so stupid. Contestant number three, Please be quiet or you will be disqualified from the rest of the game, the best man said. She shut up. Tony, the best man said, you've had the kissing part of the game. Now it's time for the telling. Leave the blindfold on until after you've answered all our questions. Groomsman number one, ask your question. He responded with, of the six contestants, who kissed the worst? Tony slowly shook his head, frowned, and said, that's easy. Everybody knows I hate whipped cream, and it felt like I was choking. Contestant number three's kiss was kind of an ugly, sloppy kiss. She didn't know what she was doing. One eggplant, and I'd give her lower if I could. The fiancé yelped and quickly covered her mouth to keep from making any more noise. I hid my smile because that kiss had been hers. What had she been thinking trying to stunt like that? More pictures to embarrass the groom at the reception? Everybody in the room laughed, and the fiancé turned a shade pink. Quiet, the best man said. Groomsman number two. The guy next in line said, What was your least favorite toy? The scissors, Tony said. It was embarrassing getting my clothes cut up. Not for us, contestant number one said. A slight laugh escaped from the fiancé. What was that all about? Be quiet, contestant number one, the best man said. Tony, we need a score. Maybe it was my imagination, 
but Tony seemed a little angry as he said, One eggplant for contestant number two, and four, and three. They all sucked. The guys in the room chuckled. The girls pouted. Contestant number three smiled? At the same time, a very serious look came across Tony's face, like he had come to a decision about something. Groomsman number three, your question, the best man said. Who had the best toy, he asked. I'd say it was either the feather boa or the glove, Tony said. Though he played the game, his smile seemed fake, because they were kind of fun and didn't make a mess. Make that the glove. Contestant number six knew how to use that, and they tried to clean me up. Ten eggplants for contestant number one for keeping it classy, and ten for contestant number six for sheer style. I win, I win, I win, came the cutesy voice of contestant number one from the back of the room. I knew the boa was the best. Her boyfriend mumbled something like, You'll have to show me your winning technique later. Alice, Tony said, is that you? You were contestant number one? Is that your boyfriend? Oops, she yelped. Sorry, it was fun to kiss you, though. One of the two I enjoyed, Tony said. Alice giggled. Her boyfriend said, Watch it. Somebody else growled. The guys turned toward contestant number three, lightly chuckled, but contestant number two loudly sneered. Contestant number three doesn't kiss as well as she thinks she does. Like always, she's all talk, 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 talk. Contestant number four yelled from the back of the room. The fiancé had turned beet red, and she pressed her lips together, tightly. Settle down, everybody. Groomsman number four, your question the best man announced. Who kissed the best? Groomsman number four asked. Sorry, Alice, but number six was the best, Tony said. If you guys hadn't been here, we'd be doing it on the floor right now. All the guys and girls catcalled and howled, laughing, except contestant number three. She had a weird look in her eyes, like she was expecting something. Alice's boyfriend the guy who had given me the hard lemonade yelled, Contestant number six, I'm buying you coffee Monday morning and you're teaching me how you did that. Alice chuckled and said, You don't need no help. My question, Tony, the best man asked, If you could have one last date before your future monogamy takes you out of the dating pool and you could only choose one of the six contestants, which one would you choose? Not numbers two through five, Tony said. Their idea of a romantic moment was getting kissed by a sledgehammer, and I'm not pissing off Alice's boyfriend. So, Alice, you're out. That's okay, Alice said. One of the other girls loudly pretended to pout, and one of the groomsmen said, Don't worry, I'll still kiss you. The fiancé crossed her arms, and the smuggest look passed through her eyes. I bet she was planning on getting even somehow. Or had she already done it? And contestant number six, the groomsman asked. Number six knew how to kiss, Tony said, smiling. Wow, I don't think I've ever been kissed like that. I felt that kiss all the way to my toes. One through five were amateurs by comparison, but six knew what to do. Number six was better than all the others combined. I'd dump Janelle and go on a date with number six right this second if that person could kiss me again. The best man chuckled and asked, Is number six a better kisser than the woman you're about to marry? Tony nodded, for a second looking thoughtful, and he finally said, Number six treated me with respect. They weren't demanding or trying to take something, but wanted to please me. I'd trust number six to be faithful and caring and kind and honorable. It's so romantic, Alice said. All this based on a kiss? One of the groomsmen said. Does that mean you love number six more than me? The fiancé sneered, a nasty undertone in her voice. Tony looked down a moment, his voice quieted, and he said, Don't laugh, but I felt something, a connection, something electric, something I've never felt before, not with anyone, not with you, Janelle. Alice's boyfriend yelled out, What advice would you give your fiancé? Learn how to kiss, 
contestant number four yelled, and the rest of the girls cackled. Tony sat up, his ruined shirt slipping to the floor, and he said, Take lessons from contestant number six. That was a kiss I will remember for a long time. I bet his fiancée didn't like that. Several of the guys mumbled, Ooh, and Alice softly said, I'm going to cry. The guy who had invited me to the game walked over and gave me two $100 bills. I'd won. Just like Tony had, I realized that I also felt something. It's hard to describe, but some kind of subtle emotion that maybe this was the the right person, that maybe Tony was the right person, that maybe I wanted to get to know him better, ask him out for drinks or coffee or hang with him. That's crazy thinking. Tony was engaged to contestant number three, the fiancé, whose name must be Janelle, and they're getting married Sunday morning. So why do I feel this sudden connection to a straight guy who's about to get married? I'm so screwed. Face it, I'm unlucky at cards and disastrous at love. Then the fiancé angrily said, Get on with it. Get on with what? Something's wrong. Think. Figure this out. The guys around her giggled and were staring at me and Tony. Alice and her boyfriend were by the door, as if about to escape. What were they expecting to happen? Of course, the big reveal about who contestant number six was. The big reveal that the person Tony had been kissing had named the best kisser in the room, even better than his fiance, was a man. Tony was straight. He'd been secretly kissed by and kissing a gay man. A lot of guys couldn't handle that. I feel used. My lungs forgot to breathe. Tony had been set up. I had been set up. Had all the girls, except Alice, deliberately made their kisses as disgusting as possible, so Tony would choose me? Alice had kept hers a safe kiss because her boyfriend was watching. No. Maybe it was rigged with the groomsman. The girls were already whispering, no doubt anticipating Tony's angry shock at having kissed a man. I could hear them now. According to Tony, a man kissed better than any of the girls here. The clues led me one step further. Why was the fiancé comfortable with the man she was about to marry kissing a bunch of people, erotically, including a man? I had assumed that the fiancé would automatically win, but I won instead. It had been an elaborate hoax to get the straight groom to make out with a man. Number six, you're our winner, the best man said. Please free Tony's hands and take his blindfold off so he can see who he was kissing. I can't wait to meet you, Tony said. Some kind of motion made me look up. Alice opened the hallway door, turned to me and mouthed, Sorry, and her and her boyfriend snuck out. My stomach went cold. I should have told Tony that I was a man before we made out. How could I have been so stupid? Alice's gentle, almost chaste kiss the only person to choose a non-messy toy, besides me. She hadn't been loyal only to her boyfriend, but, in her own way, tried to be loyal to Tony, her friend. It clicked. Too late. The tarp below the chair was wet and covered in chocolate and whipped cream, but the mess had spilled off of the tarp and there were now chocolatey footprints on the light beige carpet. I looked down at the chocolate-stained and whipped cream-stained towel. Chocolate stains and whipped cream were on my brand new shirt, too. Was it ruined? What do they say in poker? Time to reveal my cards. And I'd been dealt a pretty, lousy hand. Lousy at cards, and lousy at love. That's me. Slowly, I walked over and undid Tony's bonds and removed his blindfold. His eyes were closed. Tonight had been a setup. Let's prank the groom. As soon as Tony realized he had kissed a man, he would start shouting and yelling, maybe at me, maybe at his best man, maybe at his fiancé. But most of his anger would be focused on me, blaming me for the whole bachelor party fiasco. 
even though I had been as much a victim as Tony. This would be bad. I steeled myself for Tony's reaction. Why had I gone along with the game? The money seemed so important a little while ago, but suddenly I felt shamed. They used me to trick a man who was about to get married. I looked at the other contestants. Number one had left. Number two had chocolate stains down the front of her blouse. Number three, the fiancé, had tried to clean the whipped cream off her face and clothes, but it and the chocolate had gotten everywhere. Number four not only had whipped cream stains and chocolate stains, but held a piece of Tony's shirt as a trophy. Number five was gone. Then there was me. Mostly clean, because I had kept as much distance as I could, and I had tried to clean Tony up. I blew a long breath out, suddenly scared. I had never been more ashamed in my life. They had tricked me to unknowingly humiliate a straight man at his bachelor's party in front of his fiancée. Wait. It was worse. The fiancée was contestant number three. All the girls chatted and giggled like they knew each other. The other contestants must be the maid of honor and the bridesmaids. This whole night had been one elaborate bachelor party prank aimed straight at the groom. All they needed was one gay man to make their plan work. One of them must have lain in wait at the bar, and when they heard my conversation with Nathan, they had found their man. Damn, I'm a stupid fool. Why couldn't I have figured this out earlier? The money didn't seem worth it anymore. As soon as I could, I had to get out of here. Tony, my name is Kevin. I'm contestant number six, and I'm sorry, I whispered, and unbuttoned my shirt. At least I can make part of this right. Take my shirt and cover yourself up. His eyes immediately shot open, unlocked onto my eyes. I couldn't read his face, but I could imagine what he must feel. The shock, the disgust, the humiliation. He had named me the best kisser in the room, never realizing that I was a man. I had caused his humiliation. Suddenly, Janelle, the fiancé, yelled, Got you again, Tony. I made you kiss a man. You should see the look on your face. And she screamed as if she were on a roller coaster. It was pandemonium, guys yelling and laughing hysterically, one girl having to sit down because she was laughing so hard. Why did they think this was so funny? In a second, Tony had looked around the room, his eyes focusing on all the laughing people, at the mess on the floor, on his fiancé, on the bridesmaids, all the people laughing and mocking us, but mostly they were mocking him. Tony looked back at me, his eyes narrowed fractionally. I'm sorry, I whispered, I didn't realize. The groomsman yelled a drunken, surprise, but everyone else was laughing so hard I couldn't make out what else they said. I'm sorry, I said again, and picked up the towel to gently wipe at a chocolate stain on Tony's cheek. I finally realized what they were up to, but it was too late. I handed him my shirt. I was wearing an Under Armour gray tank underneath, and I draped my shirt over Tony's shoulders. He quickly put it on as I turned to go. Once again I said, I'm sorry, Tony. With the speed of a locomotive, he grabbed my hand and pulled me to him and in front of the leering, jeering, hysterical crowd, he kissed me. It was a nice kiss. It was, wow. I mean, really wow. When he pulled apart, he whispered, I knew you were a man with your first kiss, and I have to say, you were amazing. I didn't know what I was missing. He pulled me into another kiss. The relief released all the tightness in my shoulders. There was some kind of wetness beneath my eye. I whispered, You knew? Tony caressed my cheek and wiped it dry. Nothing to apologize for, because I enjoyed it, he whispered. Maybe some part of me is a little bit by, but I'm holding you to that drink. I looked into his eyes. He looked back. We had a moment. A very sensual moment, but only a moment. The fiancé screamed and laughed and yelled, Guys, don't you love it? Tony kissed a man, and we filmed it. I helped Tony stand, and he quickly buttoned the shirt, then took my hand. As he led me to the door, he actually smiled, and he said, 
This is my first time dating a man. Be gentle. But you're getting married on Sunday, and I don't cheat, I said. We stopped at the door, and he quietly spoke. The guys near us shushed the crowd so they could hear us. Janelle, Tony said, I told you I did not like your pranks or jokes or whatever you want to call them. Did you care? No. Remember what I said when you pulled the park prank on me? No, Janelle said, still laughing. She had to wipe tears from her eyes. You get three strikes, Tony said. The park prank was number one. The prank at the restaurant was number two. And tonight is number three. Consider yourself dumped. The marriage is canceled and I want nothing to do with you, with any of you. What? The best man said. It was a joke. What? Groomsman number two yelled. But we're friends. You can't dump me like that, Janelle yelled. Get over yourself. It was just a prank. Keep telling yourself that, Tony said. And while you're at it, post the video so everybody can see the bullet I'm dodging. If anyone asks you why I dumped you, tell them I got disgusted with your constant jokes and pranking and decided I didn't want to live with you. Or you can tell them that the man you set me up with kisses better than you do. So I dumped you for him. Epilogue There was no wedding, and when Tony was asked why, he told them to see the video Janelle had made. It turned out that Alice's boyfriend had recorded the entire kiss-and-tell game up until they left, and Tony eventually posted that. Janelle had a history of causing pranks and jokes, and she'd post them online to get views and make a little money. This one backfired on her. She lost friends and her fiancé. Her parents were beyond angry because they had paid for the wedding. They apologized to Tony personally, and then they made Janelle pay them back completely. Tony and I tried to take it slow, but we couldn't stop ourselves and fell in love. Six months later, we were living together. Sixteen months later, we were flying to our honeymoon in Puerto Vallarta, where we would sip purple rain cocktails every day. Nathan had been right. One kiss with the right person was all it took. My friends might be lucky at cards, but Tony told me that he was the real winner, especially when he seduced me using every trick he had learned from me. I let him seduce me every night, all night, and sometimes during the day, too. The End I am Gio, and thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, or think about subscribing. If you want more tales of men falling in love, I have more on my channel. Come and visit when you have a minute. And if you noticed some little noises in the background, my dog snores. I post new stories every Wednesday, so we'll see you next Wednesday. Peace.